a revolutionary greetings comrades we continue with our discussion on the countdown to the 2023 elections as we continue with this discussion we need to revisit our past um, <clears throat> i was taught that uh, history is important i'm a, hist I'm a history student by the way so history is a um, important or the past is important we draw lessons from our past it guides us to the future but you cannot change the past <clears throat> we cannot change what happened yesterday what happened yesterday is the past in the past but you cannot change it but we can draw lessons from what happened yesterday and chart a new path going forward. We draw lessons. What we did wrong, we correct. Or the mistakes that we did in the past, we correct. In the last video, we did say that uh, the land reform program, whether it was chaotic, as we define it, or not chaotic, it caused the Movement for Democratic Change, MDC, political power. We began by uh, dealing with the historical background to the formation of the Movement for Democratic Change. <laughs> and we said in the last video that we have no doubt that uh, the majority of Zimbabweans supported the Movement for Democratic Change and the majority wanted it to form the government. But as we said in the last bit, that uh, the land reform program cost it electoral victory or to be declared as the win. So in this video, I want to look into the MTC International, what we might call international friends, how its international partners costed political power as well, or electoral victory. <clears throat> because the MDC, after the referendum of 2000, as we discussed, found itself in some unholy alliance with the white commercial farmers, who wanted to protect the land that they acquired over the years or during colonialism. And the MTC had political and economic issues to deal with the ZANU PF. Then this strange alliance was established. And by the way, political alliances in their very nature, which last, are forged in the struggle, not in boardrooms. And uh, this alliance was not different because it was not forged in the boardrooms. It was forged uh, in the battlefield. <laughs> the MTC was campaigning to win votes while the white commercial farmers wanted uh, the constitutional referendum or the proposal in the constitutional referendum or in the constitution, uh, the clause in the constitution or nationalization of land uh, to have been defeated. And uh, this is what finally happened. And we then know how then uh, the war vets went to occupy land. Others say they went to occupy land. Others say they went to invade land. Started starting in Maswingo. Because of what the international community read here, when you speak of the international community, Britain, the United States, Australia, Canada, uh, liberals in South Africa is led by the Democratic Alliance. 
saw the white community in Zimbabwe being persecuted and there were issues around property rights. It meant that uh, the MTC found itself establishing links with these uh, formations or organizations or individuals and even governments that were sympathetic to white commercial farmers. Uh, the white commercial farmers in Zimbabwe campaigned vigorously for the MTC, not only inside Zimbabwe, international. They provided contact with the international community. They provided contacts with the journalists in Western media to profile or to raise the profile of the movement for democratic change as an alternative to ZANU-PF. The MTC found itself Divided, I might say, ideological. Uh, there were those inside the MTC who did not agree with the position that uh, the MTC had taken entering into, <coughs> into an alliance with these forces. Some of those were pulling the MTC to the left, trying to cement the relations or establish the relations with the progressive world. The African National Congress, South African Communist Party, COSATU, I remember uh, in one uh, COSATO Central Executive Meeting in Bramfontein, um, we had arranged that meeting with comrades in COSATO. I had accompanied um, the president of the MTC, Comrade uh, Morgan Twangerai, the deputy president of the MTC, Comrade Gibson Spanda, and the then Secretary General. Professor Watchman Nube. Well, I'm not from a, I do not have a background of a trade union. Um, so uh, I wasn't aware of the dynamics inside the trade unions. Uh, so when we arranged that meeting, which I was in the forefront of arranging, and the Cosato then agreed that uh, indeed the leadership of the MTC would be allowed to address the Cosato CEC. I'd hoped that uh, it was a meeting of alliance partners because uh, here was the leadership of the MTC which came from the trade union movement ZCTU meeting its counterparts in Cosato. That was a very, very tense meeting. Uh, I learned a lot in that meeting, but I must say it was a very, very tense meeting where Cosato never agreed with the MTC leadership in terms of its attitude to the whole question of imper on imperialism. Uh, I think this meeting happened in 2001, if I'm not mistaken. And Cosato was upset. Then Comrade Zorin Zimavai was General Secretary of Cosato. Uh, 
that was a tense meeting. The MTC actually came under fire. It was Professor Nube way to rescue the leadership of the MTC in that very meeting. At the heart of the problem, as was raised by Kosato then, and you know that Kosato, they are members of the ANC, uh, they are members of the SACP, and of course we know um, the leadership of Kosato was deported in Zimbabwe <coughs> when, when it went to offer practical solidarity because it could not abandon the rank and file of the working people of Zimbabwe who were under attack from the Mugabe regime. But at the same time, they had to be honest with the political leadership of the MTC. At the heart of the problem was lack of consultation by the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions with the sister unions. And the, its attitude when uh, it went to the annual meetings, international uh, uh, meetings, workers' meetings um, in Brussels, where the ZCTU would vote alongside European trade unions. This was a very big issue which was raised. Uh, and uh, because African trade unions, when they go to these international meetings, they take a similar position. And this is what I learned in that central executive meeting, committee meeting of COSATO. But the uh, ZCTU under the leadership of Morgan Tsvangirai would vote alongside the European trade unions, dumping the African trade unions. This was a big issue in Kosato. Um, we had, of course, numerous meetings with the African National Congress. As I'm saying that some of us were trying to pull the MTC to the left. It was a battle inside the MTC, an ideological battle for that matter. Um, <clears throat> we would spend hours with the then Secretary General of the MTC, Comrade Halema Mungian, and other comrades in the ANC, Comrade Mavivi, can't remember his name, uh, who was the head of international relations in the ANC, and the other comrades. Uh, I think the other comrade is now Deputy Minister of Copta. Uh, uh, and the other comrades. Comrade Ibrahim, Ibrahim, I think is late. And uh, this issue of our attitude to imperialism as the MTC, as a collective, I was in the MTC, by the way. was a critical issue. More worrying was the relationship that the MTC had established with the Democratic Alliance. In the most cases, uh, Comrade Twang Rai would arrive in South Africa unannounced. You hear it on 702, that is in the country, only to check that uh, is with the DA people, Democratic Alliance. And then that became problematic. We then, as I move to conclusion, because I said uh, it's a countdown to 2023 elections. And uh, in this series, we are trying to draw lessons from the past so that as we move forward, we corrected those mistakes. There was a disputed election outcome in 2002. So we began 
the campaign to mobilize regional leaders and of course the international community to force a rerun of the presidential elections of 2002. What struck me was the meeting that we had in Pretoria uh, with comrades from Tanzania. Um, the comrades said to us, uh, said comrades, if the MTC was led by a different person other than Morgan Swangirai, we would actively support the campaign for a presidential rerun. This was in 2002, after the presidential elections. And I asked him, but why are you not supporting it? Because we have evidence that the elections were not free and fair. They said, no, we know that they were not free and fair. And said, under the circumstances, we'll rather stand with the President Mugabe and the Zanu PF as opposed to supporting the movement for democratic change. And I we said, why? They said, look, we do not know the secret agreements that your leader, Morgan Tsangarai, has entered into with the Tony Blair, the then British Prime Minister. And as such, we cannot support the campaign by the MTC for a rerun because uh, the imperialist will have a foothold in Southern Africa through an MTC government and uh, this cannot be allowed. And the comrades were saying from Tanzania, were saying we'd rather fight for the reform inside the ZANU PF as opposed to the MDC. I never had an opportunity to be in a meeting with then President Tabombe. But this informed what then became popularly known as the quiet diplomas by his administration uh, that the mtc was but stooges of imperialist forces and the zanu propaganda machinery is led by professor jonathan moyo amplified this view and this got traction from the progressive world that indeed the MTC were agents of imperialist forces. Even if comrades in the progressive world differed with the ZANU PF on a number of issues, and as I'm, as I'm saying, giving an example like the Tanzanians. <coughs> saying that, uh, yes, we disagree on some issues with the ZANU PF and would not have a problem if the MTC was led by a different person and if it was seen to be homegrown, not controlled from outside, would not interfere to an extent that we protect even international fora, President Robert Mugabe, but because of the attitude of the MTC. they decided to stand with the ZANU PF and that this cost the MTC electoral victory. Uh, I think we discussed the Kapembe Commission report um, which concluded, which of course was delayed, I think it was released the, two years or so after, I'm not sure of the years, but it was released far later after the elections, that the elections were held 
in a hostile environment, and it concluded that elections were not free and fair. But all other observer missions in Africa said elections were free and fair. The European Union and others in the West declared the elections not free and fair. And of course, this came on the backdrop of Zidera, which was introduced or, or, or adopted in December, November, December 2001, which we discussed in this channel. So as we move to 2023, and as we said that uh, the working class in Zimbabwe support the triple C. And we find ourselves today triple <clears throat> C uh, led by advocate Nelson Chamis, who is a friend of Israel. Uh, he goes and uh, prays in Israel or whatever he does in Israel. And we, we know the attitude of Israel, apartheid Israel for that matter. The brutality it is committing against the people of Palestine. Uh, when we talk to comrades, some comrades in the trade union movement in Zimbabwe, who are members of Triple uh, C, they will be telling us that Chamisa is our, their best foot forward. Uh, when you look at his attitude to issues of internal democracy, well, that's internal. <coughs> but his international friends, Israel, it then brings this issue to say who are the international friends of Triple C. MTC had massive support inside Zimbabwe and we have no doubt, we have no doubt that it won elections in 2000, parliamentary elections. It won the presidential elections in 2002. We have no doubt. And it won the 2008 presidential elections. We have no doubt. But the choice of its international friends pushed away the progressive world, which did not embrace it and support it to form the government in Zimbabwe. We talk of the influx of Zimbabweans to South Africa and to other countries as a result of economic collapse. And uh, we are reminded on daily basis on this YouTube channel that uh, we must go and fix our problems in Zimbabwe. And we accept the criticism. As I conclude, will, re will history repeat itself where the progressive world will turn a blind eye to a Chamisa victory if it happens in 2023 because of his international friends, the choice of his international friends, and they're not supporting him to be declared the winner, and they rather try to reform zanu -PF. Please share with us your views, uh, what you think. Please write in the comment section. Please circulate this video. Let's have this conversation. Let's talk as Kulome. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Otherwise, I'm under comrades.